God, Lord. that you're raising up, Lord, Lord God, to take this Jesus, city for you, Lord, you, Lord God. Lord. We thank you. We praise you Amen. for our healings that are thank here today, Lord. Lord God. We thank you that the captives are free today because of you, Lord, you Lord God. Lord, yes. We magnify you. We worship you, Lord God, that our ears are open to hear your voice through yes. Pastor's voice this morning, Lord. We thank you that our hearts are prepared to receive that message this morning, Lord God. We thank you that none of us are going to walk out the same as we walked in, Lord God. But we thank you that we have that joy in you this morning, Lord God. We thank you we have that healing in you this morning. We thank you that we have that freedom in you this morning, Lord God. Yes, Lord, Lord, and again, we give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord God, for what you did upon that cross for us, Lord God. And again, we just magnify you. We worship you, Lord God, for your presence in this place this morning, Lord God. And we give you all the praise and all the glory, and the whole church says, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bam and Bess. You may be seated. Man, that was a cool song. I never heard that one before. That was pretty neat. I like that. Man, man, the, you know, the Lord is coming back. In fact, the Bible says at times that when he defends Israel, he defends like a, a man of war. And he roars like a, like, a, like a victor and a champion when he sees his people under attack. And the Bible uses words like that. And he just, no, you're not going to destroy my people. And he defends his people that way. I mean, I don't understand in a lot of ways it's the prophets have used uh, these voices of, from the Holy Spirit to encourage the, the saints of, of Israel what was important at that time because they were getting off track and the enemy's coming in and because they're off track, God used the enemy at times to bring them back. But when he was ready to say, okay, that's enough because sometimes he sees there's a, his people going off track. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later. And he allows us to go through things. And when he allows that, he's trying to draw us back to him. See, we all get off track. You just see in the Old Testament where they, they had issues. Friends, we all have issues. The Bible tells us that there's no temptation taking you. That's not common to all people. But what's also common to all people is the message of the gospel. It's, it's not just for a few. It's for all. That's where we get John 3.16. For God so loved the world, not in its darkness as sin. No, he, what he had to give his son so that the world can be saved. And whoever believes and does a 180, and really that investment in the kingdom, we're going to be talking about the kingdom a little bit later. The children are going to be dismissed later. But it's going to be a very, very strong message in that one sense of where God's heart is. He has so much purpose for all of us. But He's not going to make you do it. He won't. He won't make you come to church. He won't make you, you know... Give to the church. He won't make you to, to love your loved ones. He won't make you uh, uh, go to work. He won't make you do any of that. It's your call. Well, I have to go to work. You don't have to go to work if you don't want to. But no one's going to pay your bills. If you don't want to work, you know what? You're not going to eat either. If you don't forgive people, well, you know what? They're not going to forgive you. Well, they should. Even if they're, they're, you know, you've been trespassed against. Forgive them. I mean, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. That's how, how God made us. And you're going to see, a, it's not a dark message, but you're going to see a message that's going to be like, God says, you want to do that? That's your call. And, but for me and my wife, my house, I can't make my daughters go to church. I can't make my grandkids come to church. But for me and my wife, and if, if I didn't come to church, I hope my wife just says, Bob, what are you doing? I'm going to church. No. If she don't want to come, I'm going to church. Oh, I won't go to church unless you go to church, Barbara. I won't go to church unless you go to church, Bob. That's your, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm a little, I'm on a thin line here, a little ice here, but I want to serve this king. I want to hear his roar in my life. Bob, I love you, and I have a plan for you. Oh, but Jesus, she says I can't go to church. I mean, she's not feeling good, so I've got to just stay home. I know I'm a little tough here. I'm sorry. But I'm going to serve this kingdom. And I'm going to love him more than I love my wife. More than my, my job. More than pastoring. More than anything. But in loving him, you know what? My eyes, it's like, it's kind of like a fog lifts. It's like, whoa, all that's there? Because we love the Lord. I don't love, I, believe me, God has just blessed me. He's overtaken me. I can't, I mean, it just, 
I like to talk about my store, but then all of a sudden it gets stinky because it sounds like I'm bragging or something. I'll brag on Jesus. He's done a lot in my life. And you know what? He'll do a lot for your life too. If you, don't, if you have other plans, go for it. He's not going to make you do what you don't want to do. You can be an atheist. You can be an agnostic. You can be a Muslim. You can be a Buddhist. You can be whatever you want. But the one way that will bless your life and overtake you is to follow Jesus. He is not a religion. He's a person that says, I know you have problems, Bob. Oh, you might hear, you're going to hear a story about my life that's going to blow your mind. Never shared it before. My wife doesn't even know what I'm going to say, but I'm going to share this later in this message. It's a deep, dark area in my life, but I didn't enter into it, but almost. Some of us have entered into dark areas, and God says, I don't care. I love you at your worst. There's a song out now. I, he loves me even in my worst, but that person who's in their worst, they turn to him. See, some people, they stay in their worst and say, that's my choice. It is. But for me, I can't talk for Barbara, but uh, she's one that's stuck with me through thick and thin when everybody says, hasta la vista. And that's another story. But she's still with me, going on 51 years. I can't live without her, but I can't. I can I can't live without Jesus, and I can't live without her. But you know what? One day, I'm going to go before her. She goes before me a bit. I'm still going to say, I'm here, Jesus. And that's the way it goes. We have loved ones that have lost loved ones. But you know what? While we're in the journey, God wants us to be free and light and giving to Him our lives. More than coming to church, more than tithing, more than all that. But in that, that's where the richness comes. By following him and following the saints into the, a place called, we call the sanctuary like this, a church. You get encouraged. And I, some people say, would you get on with this and get into the wall? I like, <laughs> I like sharing Jesus. You know, one day the Lord might just say, Bob, this is your last sermon. What? You didn't tell Barbara? Yeah, she'll, she'll figure it out. Keeps her eyes on Jesus. Would you stand with me, please? We don't know. You hear about it all the time. What? What? So, and we want Ed to come up here. Ed, don't? Okay, we'll get him next week because that's going to be his last service with us. Next, Ed, we'll get you next week, okay? Because he's going to Iowa. Hit it. What? Oh, come on up, Ed. You who are in Arizona, you who are in... In, in uh, Massachusetts, this is Ed Neely. He needs a kidney, so we're going to pray for him. And, uh, yeah, gosh, me and you get two Sundays? and close. Turn around. Let them see this, this big Ed. Uh, some people are glad he's leaving. Some are not. No, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm kidding you. I'm kidding you. <laughs> he's my neighbor uh, half the week. <laughs> he is. We'll get into that story. But, friends, before we... Before we get into Ed, and then you get to stand with me for the wall. You see, there's a wall of people here. Last, last week, people say, no one's up in the front. There was nobody here because everybody sits back there. But that's okay. They're here. And now that people are viewing say, hey, there's a few more people, and you take up this whole area. They call that listener's rope. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Would you bow your hearts with me? Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. Lord, you see where we're struggling financially. We're, we're struggling in relationships, whether in marriage or at work, Lord, or in school. Even some are taking summer school and they're struggling there. Lord, they're even thinking about what's, what's the year going to look like. But Lord, when we have you in our view, Lord, that day ahead is going to be wonderful because, Lord, we know that you will not leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, though we may walk through things, you're going to be with us, even if it seems like a valley or maybe be a hilltop. And all of a sudden we realize we've got to go down that hill. But Lord, you're always with us. You protect us, you provide, you guide. And so, Lord, now also, too, there's people like Ed that we want to pray for. Friends, would you just raise your right hand toward him, even at home, for Ed? He's going back for a kidney in Iowa, and, and he's going to go into dialysis. And uh, that's a, I'm not going to get in this story. But, Lord, we pray for him. We lay hands upon him. We reach our hands out. These are holy hands that believe in you, Lord Jesus. Those that believe in your name and believe in your love and grace, Father. Jesus himself said, that we will lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Lord, we ask Jehovah Roth, the doctor Jesus, you'd give them a new kidney, that when they look at it again, they say, hey, these kidneys are good. Stay in Iowa and enjoy your kids. 
But Lord, if not, thank you for that new kidney from someone who was sacrificed or that you have allowed to come home and we trust they would go home to you. And Lord, now we take this moment as we put our hands down, but we put our hearts toward you and we cast cares on you because you care for us. Friends, would you do that at home? We pray for Ed. Now pray for yourself and say, Jesus, take this need, whatever that may be, a work situation, your finances, or your health, or relationships, Lord. Thank you for this time, Lord. Those that are home and viewing, and later on, they can do the same thing. That they take away. There's a takeaway here, not just what is a song going to do for me or a message, but Lord, the takeaway is you in our heart, in our journey, that Lord, you're with us and you forgive us and you'll improve our lives with your love because we look to you. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone will say amen. Tell the person next to you, glad to see them. I want all... I was wondering, one of these Sundays, you bring all, the, all my friends, my fans, if they could sit in the front with me. Little Jade and King and, of course, the Bass. And Grandma, yeah, and all of you. Because you are my friends. Grandma. Oh, this one, he's, he got energy, huh? <laughs> Hi, Sandra. Hi. Hi, Debs. How are you? How's my favorite pastor? Okay. We try. <laughs> See, did I get anything? So I was going to have to go back there for something. I forgot. I had to get something. Well, no, I, I was going to do something. Oh, well, it's that old-timer stuff, Did you right? Mark your bag? Did Test. You oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Okay. I bet. Amen. God is good, amen? Amen. Just a, a few announcements. Again, as, you, as many of you know, the, the women's uh, Bible study is over. They're taking the month of August off. But they should be resuming in September, but we'll let you know <clears throat> all the details then. Um, but really, ladies, I ask, pray about getting involved in that. You know, my, my wife would always share with me in this last study that they did with the book of James. She would always share what she learned and all that. So it was really cool. I sound like I'm losing my voice. So anyways, but praise the Lord. So remember that, ladies. Keep that in mind. Keep that in prayer. And if you have questions about it or what the anything like that, see Sister Laura. Amen? And also remember the men's Bible study on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock downstairs, so I really encourage you guys to come out to that as well, to get encouraged, to get filled up. Amen? And don't forget Wednesday night prayer. I'm encouraging you. We need to come to prayer. There's a lot of things to be praying for. Amen? Our nation needs a lot of prayer. Our midterm elections need a lot of prayer. But let me tell you the power of prayer. Someone shared on Wednesday that they're checking this person for cancer and they saw something on the lung. So they had to do a CT scan. They went, nothing was there. Free. It's clear. That's the power of prayer. Standing in the gap and that's what we do on, on Wednesday night. We don't come just to hear people's problems. We come to stand before God's throne and fight for people. That's what prayer is so important. And, you know, the more that show, the more power there is. But God will use just the few that's here to even express his power. Amen. But there's, when there comes a power, just imagine what you can do. Look at the drag. Pastor went to the drag races this, this uh, last year. The power that's in those motors to get them down. If they weren't working on how to get more power, they wouldn't win. That's how we come in. If we come in like that and build this motor of prayer, God will do th miracles like you wouldn't believe. But it takes you guys to make that effort to come, to that sacrifice. So remember that. Remember our military, our police officers. Um, remember our sister uh, Thula in prayer. She lost her son, Chico. Yes. He passed away. So remember that. She has uh, issues as well. So just remember ho the whole Amada family on that. 
Uh, there's Sister Jenny Garcia, there's Sister Darlene, Brother Bill, there's many things that we, Sister Margaret, my dad, there's many of us that need prayer. Our Brother Herman needs prayer, so again, I'm just encouraging you guys, there's, you can't say there's nothing to pray for. Pray for love life. Again, I really encourage you guys, we're coming up, August 20th is, is our next one. I'm giving you plenty of notice. Come out just for an hour and a half to walk and to pray. You don't even have to talk. Just come out and support the cause. Amen? Amen. And remember, uh, next Sunday, we will not be meeting here at 830. So if you show up and no one's here, don't think you got left behind in the rapture. <laughs> but we will be at the park at 1030. Okay, 1030. Yep. At 1030, our service will start, not 11. We made a correction. But if we can get some men to come up a little earlier to help out, set up and all that. Um, Remember, um, it's a potluck, so make sure you bring enough for more than just your four. Bring your chairs. And if you want to get water baptized, make sure you see Pastor Bob on that as well. Amen? Amen. And remember the homeless. If you want to get involved or if you want to uh, uh, donate, you can see Sister Lana as well on that. Amen? Amen. Anything? Good. Amen. How many know it's good to give to God? Amen. When you're... If you want to donate candy for the piñata, make sure you see Ms. Barbara as well. Amen? And how many knows? I already said that. How many knows good to give to God? God <laughs> is faithful when you are faithful. Amen. You know, the city council just improved. We're getting a 5% increase. Even through all the stuff that's going on in this economy, the inflation, all that, God is blessing not only me but my coworkers in our department with a 5% increase. But that... I truly believe is because my wife and I sew. This is the biggest stock that I have. I look at Amen. my retirement stock, it, Amen. it's going down, but you know what? I don't worry about that because when I invest in the kingdom of God, I'll never be without. That's right. So I'm encouraging you. If you never tried or didn't, don't think you can, trust me, you can. You won't know the power until you start giving and being obedient in that giving. Amen. So let's pray for our morning tithes and offering this morning. Dear Lord, we come before you, Lord God, and we thank you again that we have the opportunity, Lord, to sow into your kingdom, Lord God, that it would multiply, Lord God, to meet the ends of the world, Lord God, to touch that lost soul, Lord God. Lord, and again, we thank you. We praise you for those that are able to give, Lord God. We thank you for our jobs that you provide for us that we're able to give, Lord God. And Lord, and we pray for those that aren't able to give, Lord, that you would just bless those, Lord God, and bless, Lord, each and every one that gives, Lord, even if it's just that one, Lord God, to touch that lost one out there, Lord. And again, we just thank you. We just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are we on? Yes. Okay. Our children give you dismissed for Children's Church. Our youth are going to stay in. I think that the youth can um, handle this sermon because what they're handling at school. So um, it'll be pretty intense. And those that can't make it, if you on staff are going to be going back, I would encourage you to please uh, go back online and look at this message and uh, hear what um, we're talking about uh, because it's a deep message. We're going through a series in the book of Romans, and uh, it's a series that uh, we're going to go through the whole book because, uh, you know, I've always liked what, the way um, Calvary Chapel, Chuck Smith, that we first started out in the Jesus movement back in 71, early 71, where he would go through the book of the Bible, just like J. Vernon McGee. He would go through the, uh, the whole book of the Bible in five years, going through it verse for verse, because it has an important part where we know the Scripture. So um, I, uh, I think most pastors, we call it expository preaching, verse by verse. Or we can't hit every word and, and, and nail it, but we try to get the context of the passage. And we've been doing that on Thursday nights with our men. And thank you, Greg, and all the men that, that participate and teach out of their heart what they see. I think that's the beauty. And even when our ladies get together, same thing. So you at home, find a good family church and get involved. Don't just depend on a little appetizer like, like sermons. Now, sermons may uh, really affect you, but I hope they affect you to where you say, I want more. I want to see more of your word, Lord. So for you viewing audience at home, and we, we get close to 100 people hitting on, or at least wanting to see some guy up here. I don't know. But thank you for joining us. You live. And uh, a shout out to my 
adopted mom and dad, uh, Bill and Darlene, who are at home. Uh, I can't tell uh, you enough, Bill and Darlene. I love you so much. But this, the title of this sermon out of Romans, a series in Romans, it's called this, The Sad Reality of the Unbeliever's Mindset. The Sad Reality of of the unbeliever's mindset. Okay, we're going to break that down. It's going to be pretty deep, my friends. Romans chapter 1, the text, verses uh, 18 to 32. Romans 18 to 32. So if you have your iPhones, and many people don't even bring Bibles. I was talking to Ed this morning. He's living next door to me. Hey, did you bring your Bible? He looks at his iPhone. Here it is. I, I, I'm an old guy. I like hard copies like this. That's a hard copy. But, see, I, I can't, un- well, yeah, I guess you can underline your, your iPhone, Greg does all that and whatever, but I'm not smart like him, but I, I do the best that I can, <laughs> like your daddy. But the title of this sermon, uh, I already said, uh, the, the theme, you have it before you, and it's, it's this, um, the believer, as you see it in your, your, your uh, notes. How, does everybody have another notes? Does everybody have, okay, good, because uh, you can come back and kind of question later on what we'll be talking about. Here's the theme, friends at home. The believer can see the foolishness of human behavior who don't believe that God exists. That's their call. That's their choice. Christians are to live a life of faith in the Creator God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We actually used that in some of our theme last week, but with this one we didn't. In culture today, people's arrogance has traded the natural truth of God for an unnatural lie of Satan. In culture, I think really... The cultures of the world, and especially now in the United States too, people's arrogance has traded the natural truth of God for an unnatural lie of Satan. And point one, for you at home, we have three points. People are trading the truth of God for a lie. Verses 24 through 25. People are trading, point two, people are trading the natural relationship for unnatural ones. That's going to be a heavy one. We're going to lay on, really, this whole message is going to be a heavy lay on. For all of us. Verse 26 through 27. Point three. People don't want to retain God in their knowledge. Verse 28 through 32. The end of that particular chapter. And three things to remember. These are heavy. Trading the truth of God for the lies of Satan will destroy a society from the inside out. Our culture has been going on. Our nation has been going on a little over 200 years. The Roman Empire lasted about 200 years too. And they destroyed from dis- River destroyed from inside out. And we're not far from that, friends. Another point. Scripture is clear. Homosexuality is sin. But it is only sin. There's a lot of sin. That's not the only sin. Hate the sin. Love the sinner. Okay, like I said, this is going to be a a tough sermon. But I want you to hear it to its entirety. You at home. Third point, it's time to pray for all to come to Jesus and his church, this church, all churches, to repent too and walk in their talk and walk their talk according to the word of God in truth by the power of the Holy Spirit that is through all of us. The Holy Spirit will help us. You know, um, I want to give a proposition. The proposition is this. It's time for the church to proclaim the foolish behavior of humans and encourage them to return to God. No, it's your job, pastor. That's... Not the truth. God has called all of us. Out of second chapter of Corinthians 5, it talks about that I am a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. We're going to talk about things that you, you know about your person. If you still know them and practice that, we got some, you got some issues because we all will stand before the God, the living and the dead. When you say the living and the dead, what do you mean? The, the dead are those who don't want God. The living will even give a an account for the things that you, you didn't say you're sorry about. Oh, I forgot about it. Okay. You know, we, we, need to, we need to forgive others and even ourselves. And we knew that person. We don't know them anymore because you're a new creature in Christ. That's the difference. And so we go forward and we begin to love this God. You know, we have a, a hummingbird feeder at home and it's been a lot of fun to watch the hummingbirds and, and uh, these other birds come in and feed off these hummingbird feeders. And uh, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a yellow bird that's been coming in and feeding, and it only nests in palm trees. But uh, I, I did a research on it. It's called, uh, it's called a, the, the uh, hollow 
not the hollow sparrow. And I forgot the full name of it. I'm sorry, but it's it comes and feeds in in our 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 bird feeder. Now hummingbirds, if you didn't know this, they go on migration. They're seasonal birds, and there's ten thousand types of different birds, and most of them are by the nature that God has put in them. Somehow they migrate, and some of them migrate up to ten thousand miles. Hummingbirds they migrate. 5,000 miles, but we have these two little hummingbirds are fighting over this one bird feeder. That other one is for the other birds because they're bigger. But God is putting these birds a natural sense of, of migration. It's just in them. It's, it's like a, their DNA. And we too, we as humans, we have in our DNA what, what even in our sense, in our, in our mind, we just sense this is right and wrong. God has given us in our conscience what is right and wrong. And the sad thing and the reality is that as, as man, we rebelled, and we begin to want to do it our way. You see, God is a God that gives us free will, and we can do whatever we want. Like I said earlier, you at home, you saw me kind of getting a little tyrant of, hey, you can do whatever you want. You really can. We are not robots, and your kids too. <laughs> Here's the thing too. You that are raising kids, teenagers or whatever, and they're starting to feel the energy to make decisions. And you're doing the best, and it's good. Do you, the best you can to steer them in the right direction. Because there's going to be a time like you and I, we said, hasta, lista, hasta la vista, mom and dad, I'm out of here. And, they're, and they really, they can influence you still and encourage you, but they can't make you do what you want to do. I don't want to, to be a policeman like my dad. I talked to a policeman yesterday as a sheriff. I said, and I watched this kid play football, his kids. And I asked him, he, he came to our yard sale yesterday, I said, I said, you know, is your kids, are, do they follow you? I didn't want to say he was a sheriff because I've talked to other sheriffs. And don't tell people I'm a sheriff. It's not a popular occupation, right? So I didn't mention it in front of anybody, but I told him later, that dude that's 6'3 is a, was a sheriff in my neighborhood, and he still lives there. Did your kids, did they follow that career? Because it's a good career. And he said, are you kidding me? He says, no, I'm so glad that they didn't. But here again, it's a place where they had a choice to do what they want to do. Dad said, no, you, it's a good job. Sons, you go do it. Dad, we don't want it. And dad's going, oh, good. I don't know if the dad encouraged it. He sounded like he discouraged them. But, you know, everyone has a choice. And that's the way God has made us. But what happens in the result, we turn to our own devices. We don't want to follow God and his, the basic instincts that we have in our lives. We have a we have that choice. Could you? And I, I get in trouble as a pastor because sometimes I, I want to just encourage more people to come and do this and do that. And you know what? I get in such trouble. Where are you at? Missing you. Oh, oh, here he's calling again. That's a pastor, even a small flock like this. David was a, a small time, you know, shepherd. And he, his job was to go and, hey, we're missing you. What's going on? Don't tell me what to do. And you know what? We can't. We can encourage. But when pastors begin to control and tell people, you know, I like, I like Greg, uh, Greg Quintero because I, I, I really do. I make a lot of calls to people. Come on to men's study. Can't make you do what you don't want to do. And Greg says, he always says to me, he says, Pastor Bob, hey, who's going to be here? Who's going to be here? I said, Greg, I don't roll that way. I'm going to call him. Craig tells you that all the time. Greg's too cool for me. Uh, you know, it's like, Craig, what if we had three? I don't care. I'm going to preach to just you and me or t teach. And I said, well, that's okay. We like to go back and forth and stuff. But, but the whole thing is, is as a pastor, and that's kind of my problem, because I do care for you and I love you. And I think that's good for all pastors to call and care. But you still can't make them do what they don't want to do. Hey, I'm going here. Okay. And, and you know, that's the way God made you. But the problem is in our nature, it gets even darker when people say, not just from pastors, but the culture or their conscience. And they say, don't, no, no. They, they, they flood their conscience with, no, I want to do it this way. And so that basis of nature God created in us, like, like the, the, the migration of, of birds and animals. It's like God has given us in our hearts that type of sense. He doesn't just throw us out there and anything goes. He has a truth and a place where he wants men and women, boys and girls, to walk in. And if we leave them without training them, 
like I was saying about even your young people, they still have that opportunity to hear and see mom and dad's life. That's what's so important to have moms and dads stay together. In fact, the Bible tells us on Malachi chapter 2, God hates divorce on this one basis because it messes up the next generation. Read it for yourself, the whole thing. I'm not going to get into the exact verse, but it tells God hates that. And, but God is a forgiving God, and He allows us to regroup ourselves with forgiveness from this cross. Lord, you still love me because I went through a divorce or, or I, I hurt something. Lord, you, he says, I do. But you come with a broken and contrite heart. Not like, well, it was all his fault. It was all her fault. It was all my kid's fault. No, no. Be responsible and take the hit. Be responsible take the hit. And God will bless you. But what happens? We see, and we're going to read the verse, uh, scripture in just a minute, but in verse 25, we'll read the whole thing. But the Bible says this in verse 25 of chapter 1. People exchange the truth of God for a lie. We exchange. They, they don't know the word, but what happens is people have exchanged what they sense in their conscience, what is right, and they just miss it completely. So we're going to read Romans chapter 1, 18 through 30, or um, yeah, we're going to read 18, 32, but I want you to see this word, therefore. It's an adverb that signifies something that happens before that. It's for that reason, because of that, what it is, it's the unbelief that we talked about last week. What happened? There's a, when people don't believe in God, there's a void. And what comes in that void, I'm sorry, when light leaves, what comes? It's like in our very world, a darkness comes in. And so let's read this text, and then we're going to break that text down a little bit more. But it's, we're looking at Romans chapter 1. Verse 18 through 32. So if you have your Bibles with you, or if you don't have one, here we have it up here. And um, it's 18. Yeah. So um, here we go. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness for men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because of what may be known of God, is manifested in them. For God has shown it to them. It's manifest. There's a, like the migratory birds. It's in, it's in us. There's a sense that God's truth is still in us, even if we don't know the Word of God. God can still speak. You think, well, you need the Word for God to speak and enlighten you. Friends, no, you don't. That's what we call that natural revelation. Special revelation is when you and I, we share Jesus Christ. But... Natural revelation is what he has given to the mag, uh, migrating birds. He's given natural revelation to us. Say, Look at this world. How can it be? It's so, I mean, the moon stays in its place. The sun rises. We know every day. We, everything is in balance. We have oxygen. We have, you know, gravity. It's like, how does all that happen? Ah, oh, just by chance. No. The creator of it all put it all there. And so... He says this, because of what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are truly, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Okay? And so it says, because, of all, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him, be, uh, nor were thankful because of the futility in their, their thoughts and their foolishness of their hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became, they, professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the image like a corruptible man and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God has given them over to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, worshiping and serving the create, creature rather than the Creator who, ble who is blessed forever. For this reason, God has given them over, excuse me, for this reason, God has given them up to their vile passions. For even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lusts toward one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And excuse me, my glasses aren't as strong as I hope. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteous sexual immorality, 
wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. These, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, and disobedient to parents, um, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice, practice is a big thing we'll talk about a little bit later, are deserving of, of death. Not only do they, do they do the same, but they also prove of those things who practice them. Here God has his word, and there again, people have a hard time with this passage. I think all pastors, they, they you know, we, we don't want to offend, but then again, we, we don't want to compromise God's word. I'm sorry, and I'm not going to compromise God's word. But we have in our culture and in all of our families people that say, I don't want to hear the Bible, don't talk to me about that. But there again, that's their choice. We all have family members that are in an area of, of, of I think, immorality. And by the way, we're, we're going to talk about other sins too. Because immorality isn't just homosexuality or, or other areas like that. But there's many things that we just talked about that, that, are, that are sinful. But I want to talk about point one. People are trading the truth of God for a lie. They trade the truth of God. And last week, like I said, we talked about where they had the choice. They don't even believe in God. Well, that's the therefore. Therefore, why did all this void come? Because they don't believe that God is, is even there. And so what do they fill that therefore with? An unbelieving heart. I don't believe that he is. I can do whatever I want. And that's what that darkness of the lie of Satan says, he's not there. That's what he did to Eve in the beginning. Did you know that God doesn't want you to eat this fruit? Because if you eat it, you'll be like him, and it's good to eat. And not only that, make you wise like God. Whoa! And that's, the tempter is still doing that to humanity today in other areas. He's, he hasn't changed in that one sense, but he's just smarter than us. But we, we're, we hide under the Lord. It's talking about migratory birds. It's interesting that, that the psalmist would say in Psalms 91, Lord, I hide under your feathers. Lord, you cover me. I mean, there's words that the, the scriptures use to, to describe this loving God like a, like a brewing hen. I want you under my wings, but you say no. Jesus said that about Jerusalem. And that's an interesting part. If you know your scriptures in, in the Gospels, just before Jesus was going to the cross, he says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you only would have known the time of your visitation, I wanted you like a mothering hen. You mamas that have little ones, don't mess with those babies. They'll tear you in two. I don't care if you look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. They would rip you in two because they have a ingrained in their heart like God. I love my people, but they... People say, no, 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 and they get out of this covering. And that's a sad reality, and that's what's going on in our culture today. But Paul, he's, he brings this argument because of the re results of bad choices, and these bad choices are in our culture today. And he says, therefore, God has given them up. Verse 24, <clears throat> actually, yeah, 24 and 25, we're, we're jumping up there. We read up to 18, but we covered those last week. Paul says, therefore, God's given them up to uncleanness. Can you imagine God say, imagine your parent, and sometimes parents do that. You hear about all the time where parents just say they're, they're into, they're, they're just, they don't want to listen to mom and dad. They just, okay. I mean, we've all seen that in, in families. You can't make people do that, even your own family. Well, I raised them so good. They get influenced by other influences. You do good, mom and daddy, you know? And you, all of a sudden, you do all kinds of stuff. What got into my kid? Well, there's other influences besides yours. Do the best that you can and be a good example. Love the Lord. Love your wife. Love your husband. Forgive people quick. And serve the Lord with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. And I'm telling you, things will be different. And they still may go out. PK, PK uh, pastor's kids. It's amazing. Pastor, I mean... Nobody's exempt. I'm not exempt because I love the Lord. I just keep my eyes on Him. And through the valley, it may be dark. I don't know if you ever walked through a dark valley, backpacked. I've backpacked in the dark trying to get to the campsite, and it's tough. But you know, that flashlight, it sure helps. Jesus is that light, and He help you through every valley. But there again, the choice is ours. And God has allowed us He's allowed us to make decisions, but also, too, if we make a decision, he's going to 
He's going to say, okay, this is what you want. If you want to be uh, gay, it's your choice. But, you know, the, 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 the homosexual community today, they say, well, God made us this way. God made us this way. And, you know, you know they're God. God. God's okay with that. Well, you know, God loves us, but there's still sexual immorality. By the way, people have adulterous affairs. Fornication is just like homosexuality. Say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Friends, you need to repent if you're in a fornication relationship or if you're in an adulterous relationship. God, forgive me. God wants you to walk in the light. Oh, we're just going to pick on homosexuals or the gay community. No, 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 no. No, God wants all to come to Him. He who walks in the light in your dark backpack trip, you'll have fellowship. Because, hey, hey, come over here, look at the light. And you help them through. So, friends, you know, you think, well, I'm, we're just going to back, bash gays. No, no, we're going to bash sinners and draw them, all of us, close to the Lord and to the church especially. We're going to break that down for the church as well. Because you know what? The church... When judgment comes, you know where, who, where it comes first? The church. Judgment comes first to the house of God. Because, you know, we have just said, I don't need this stuff. I'm out of here. Friends, and you get older too. And I'm, I, I, I'm now 70. One day you, you hang things up, right? But, you know, for me, I don't know about Barbara. I can't, I mean, I, I, she'll, she's followed me for 50 plus, even longer than that. And Daryl, too, has been married a long time. And our wives have been good to us, Daryl. But you know what? Even when we get older, we're going to follow you, Lord. Somehow we're going to get involved. Right, Daryl? Somehow to of this kingdom. Because it will have no end. Just say, so, well, you're pastor. You've got to come to church. I want to be here. I always like bragging on this part. I've known him. I've been in ministry 47 years. But one thing I practiced when I was 19 years old, I want to come to Bible studies. I want to come to church. Do you know what? I'm not a pastor. But pastor, what can I do? It's true. I work with kids. Like Lord just went out. I'd go out with the kids. I just want to get involved. And you know what? And I know what it's like to work. I've worked with unions. I've been in supervision. I've been a CEO. And you know what? I've gone to school and put 80 hours in. You know what? I'm here. Barbara, we're going to church with these kids. Not my kids, you don't, you know, they don't come what's now they're they're in their forties. They're not babies. Come on. Oh, I, I'll call him once in a while like I call you. Hey, how's church over there in Rhode Island? Oh, we're doing good, Dad. Hey, Allison. Allison's working. Jerry, I can't make them in their job situation. But for me, I'm going to be here. For you, you do whatever you want. But I tell you the truth, the best way is to stay involved with this kingdom. No, what about me, mine, me, myself, and I, and my four, no more? But do it. It's your call. But I'm talking about me. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm going to throw me under the bus. You think, well, you're throwing me under the bus too. Hey, the shoe fits, well, whatever. But here we, God is talking about where people, if they trade the truth of God for a lie. And that's what's going on today. And our society, that's what they're doing. Everybody, it's like everybody, what's right is wrong and wrong is right. And Christians, our responsibility, we do have a responsibility and I, 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 I got to make a correction. Last week I said uh, Ecclesiastes. It's Ezekiel. Where Ezekiel warns his people, I will put it on you if you don't say something. And it, it's on them if you say something. If you don't say something, I will stand before God and say, Bob, you had an opportunity to, to love and help that person, but you just I, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Moms, dads, you know what I mean. You're going to have that situation. Because as, as much as the kids will say, Dad, come on. Speak the truth in love. Be kind and gentle. You know, humility is this. It's power under control. It's a power like a Clydesdale that with a little kiss or a little, little, just a little tap of the wood. You know, I, Max goes running out in my front yard and there's coyotes in our areas, you know, and all over areas, but... I've learned to do this with Max. Instead of yelling, Max, get over here! I do this. Thank you. It's a great, it's great. I trained Pavlo's dog. And uh, Max became Pavlo, well, whatever. Uh, be careful because you can be a Pavlo too. You know, but God uses stuff. You know, as Christians, like I said, it's our responsibility. Timothy says this in, 
in First, Second Timothy. I got a roll here because uh, people are starting to say, what's going on here? Second Timothy 2, 25 to 26 says this. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, you give them the opportunity. Hey, God has a better way. Let God speak to their hearts. And Paul says to Timothy, his understudy, so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snares of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. The enemy's speaking all the time. And so, no doubt in our society, Satan is speaking to our kids. And he's taken our society and he's, he's given these advices to our children in our social uh, you know, areas of school and different things like that. But they're buying into Satan's lies. They go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Friends, Satan is alive and well. And he's working in the world. Not just the United States, not just in California, but all through the world and through people. He's working in that way. And so he's called us to fight the good fight with people and speak to them, not mockingly, but with gentleness and kindness. We, don't, we should never mock anybody who's in that gay community. They're welcome in this church. But we'll speak the truth in love. Everyone's welcome in their church. I don't care what color, tongue, tribe, or nation you are. Come to Jesus. He has a better way. We don't be getting down on their case. I have gay family members in my family, and it's like, that's their choice. We all do. We all do. But love them. And don't be afraid to just, God has a better way. Because in their heart, they know. And the problem is, and that's the therefore, they don't want to retain God in their conscience. But as long as you keep living for the Lord, they're retaining God in their conscience because they can't get rid of you as a relative or a friend or a neighbor. That's the problem. But we speak like Jesus did to the woman caught in adultery. Those people that want to, want to throw stones at the lady in adultery, Jesus just got down. I don't know what, nobody knows what he wrote down in that. He just, I like what, uh, what was it, uh, um, on the Passion uh, with uh, Mel Gibson, he, he had that hand go cross and in slow motion, the, the sand goes, <laughs> and he just, he just looks up and, you know, you without sin, why don't you throw the first stone? He told the, the precious soul who was stuck in, in, in this darkness, go and don't sin no more. And you know, when the, when the Holy Spirit replaces that darkness, there is a freedom. I won't get into areas of my life yet, but I will in a minute. God replaces that darkness that we've been in with His love and light. It's like, who, who wouldn't want to have that peace and that joy of the Lord Jesus? Point two, people are trading natural relationships for unnatural ones. In Genesis, real quickly, Genesis 1, 28-28. This is interesting. Genesis chapter 1, 28-28. 29, the very first chapter of the Bible. For God created man in his image. In the image of God. In the image, image of God. He's not male. He's not female. He is spirit. But in his image, he created somehow the, these attributes that we have as male and female. Now, he doesn't have body parts like we do. But he, this is what we do have body parts. Listen to this one. He created male and female. And he created them. Then God blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful. Here's where the created parts come in. Fruitful is we consummate and we fulfill that purpose of God to do this. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish and the sea, over the birds of the air, and over everything that moves on the earth. He has a purpose. You cannot, you know, I know that because of science uh, in our gay community, they can have children. I get that. But no man could have a child. It's impossible. It is impossible. And we know that by, by that truth. But in turning to God, we get to be set free to this truth. And this we get to share with others. But what happens is we turn to creatures and ourselves and not to God, the one who gives the purpose of life. God gives us purpose. And Paul says, for this reason, when they turn away from for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. What? Vile passions. Even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. A woman cannot, with another woman... Bear a child. They need a seed to bear a child. Even nature shows that. The birds, 
the flowers. I love my fruit trees. But you know what? And I do have one tree that's self-pollinated. I'm glad about that. But there are some plum trees that you need to cross-pollinate and put them right together because they pollinate. But Paul says by the Spirit, even women, they turn against this natural place. And so God's judgment is given because of these practices. Because they don't want... See, God doesn't want none to perish, but they continue this practice. Scripture stresses that they turn against the natural way to these unnatural ways, indicating their activity, these sexual activities against God's created order. God's created order was to, to consummate and fill the earth with these precious children. Why? Because He has purpose. And by the way, He has an eternal purpose. This just 70, 80, 90 years... Is, isn't going to, you know, cut it. God wants all to come to heaven. Now, the homosexual community, they insist that, that it's perfectly acceptable, God practicing homosexuality because God made us this way. No, contrary to scriptures, God didn't make us that way. To scriptures. The subject is God shows us that he has another way. And, and here we see this, because scripture shows us there's no place in scripture no place in Scripture where God says, yes, this, they take it out of context, but no place in Scripture does God say, this is my will. No, Jesus hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So his will is the same. And so he says, likewise, also men in 27, leaving their natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves a penalty of their error. I won't get into all the stuff that's going on. We've seen what has happened in in, in our gay community, and, and there again, they would, people are reviewing, they're probably not happy with this message, but friends, I'm, I'm going to stay with the word. I can't give you my opinion. If I give you my opinion, I'm out of the ministry. I want God's word, and I, I, and I do the best I can like you would. But here Paul continues this argument, turning from the female homosexuality to the practice pointing to three perversions. They abandon their natural sexual activity with women, they and intended for men, a man, and they burn in their lust one for another. That's a strong language describing this burning desire. And so Paul follows this, this, this biblical teaching. Homosexuality behavior is strictly forbidden in Scripture. Here it is in Leviticus, the Old Testament. Leviticus 18.22. You shall not lie with a male as with a man. It's an abomination. God doesn't change, okay? And you know, people could take that out of context. And I've read a lot of different views of both sides and it's like, stay in the context. Leviticus 20, 13. If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Even though society preaches, they preach. Our society preaches to us, this is okay. And we are under, under attack. Because they're going to preach, and their preaching is loud. And then Christians must follow the commands of God. We must follow God's word. But... What's happening in the church? We want to be politically correct. No, we want to be biblically correct. Amen? Amen. Be biblically correct. Even though you're working with people, and I've, I, I'm, I'm proud of my blue collar. I work with people of all persuasions, different colors. The people that I work with are just like, okay, that's their choice, but I get to share Jesus. And they have come to me and asked me about, you know, well, what do you believe and this and that. So there's opportunity where you work, where you go, in your homes. You have that opportunity, but God's willing to receive anyone if they come to him by faith with repentance. Not like, okay, I want you, Jesus, and we still practice. No, you make the 180. That's turn around. Not stay in a 360 like you know, somebody doing a you know, one of these wheelies and just it's like, whoa. People's lives are like that. Do the 180 and enjoy this walk. It's a beautiful place. And so we receive Jesus, but we repent of, of our, our, bad, our background. But homosexuality is considered an acceptable practice by many in our world today, even in the church. The other church. There's, part of the church is, is, is woking and getting woke. Well, we can't do that. We, we, we don't want to offend anybody. But God does not dis encourage this. He discourages this. But if you have a desire for that, you know, they call that normal. What do you do? You know, you, you live your life. You go to your family parties. They might have their families. Invite them. I, my uncle was gay. He had three, two beautiful daughters, both strong Christians. One was a professional Christian singer. We go to his parties and it's like, 
Interesting. They're very interesting, but you know they're loving people, but they, they, don't, want to, they don't want to talk about God. That's a sad reality, but you know what? If you come to my home, we're going to talk about God. If, you, you know, if the subject comes up, and maybe you maybe even make the subject come up a little bit. God, open my door. You said you'd make, in, in all my ways, you said, thank you, God. You will manifest your knowledge through me in this place. Maybe the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I believe it's 14, it says, to some it's, it's a smell. It's like, why didn't somebody tell me this? To another, it's like, pew, get out of here. They don't say it to you personally because, there again, they don't want to hurt your feelings. But you know what happens is, is that in their heart they can't stand you because you're talking about things that really hurt their feelings. And you know what? You see people on that edge of eternity and you don't say nothing? Someone in your family, someone in your neighborhood, and with, with gentleness and kindness, you share with them. You know, just before I came to the kingdom, this was going to share with you. Just before I came into the kingdom, I was, nine, I was 18, but I had a lot of problems. I had a bad car accident. Some of you heard that before. I flipped this Bronco a bunch of times, and I started to really get just inwardly depressed. And I had a really good friend. And I remember one time we were hanging out with a couple of the friends, but this one friend was, I won't get into his names for the viewing audience, and he was, he was like a best friend. And all of a sudden, something came over me. And I had like feelings for him. Even sexual feelings. And I said, hell no! In my mind, I'm going, what? I mean, these are feelings that are coming. Where's these coming from? I was like, but think about it. What if I were to say, hey, and I would have given into those feelings? You know, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, I believe it's 12, it says, we don't battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rules of darkness in high places. There are powers of darkness that influence us and influence our kids and speak to us. And next thing you know, we act these thoughts and feelings out and say, well, the devil made me do it. No, no, the devil's going to tempt you to do it. He can't make you do it if you don't want to do it. But we yield to it, and when we're yielding to it, then we begin to own it. And the Bible says in James, it, the sand is a temptation, and if we hold fast, we're like a, we're like a wave that, that's going to hold fast, or we're like a, a lake, but all of a sudden we get to be waffled with the temptation. And the Bible says when we give into this, it's sin, and sin produces death. And God doesn't want that. That's not his perfect will. And one time, I came to the Lord. I, I wasn't going to tell this story, but it turned out, geez, that, that's 10 o'clock. Should I keep going? Yeah, thank you. Okay, anyway. I was up in, in Chantry Flats. I was, I was a Christian, and I was witnessing to a, a Jewish guy. And he says, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gay. And I shared about Jesus when he came in my life. I share with him. And, he, and so he said, man, we can hang out. I said, well, I don't really want to hang out with you. I want to tell you about Jesus, but we got to be talking buddies. And he says, I got a cabin up in Chantry Flats. This is 1971, so I said, well, I love camping, I love hiking. So I went up to Chantry Flats, and he had a cabin, and we went in there. And, and man, this guy was hitting on me, but I said, hell no, not to say that to him. <laughs> but, but you know, I'm just saying, there again, the enemy was still working on me. But I was working against the enemy, saying, Jesus loves you. I forgot his name. But it was a Jewish guy, and he was sincere and a lovely person, but, he, but there again, he, he fell and anyway, that's where his life ended up. I don't know. I, I, I'd call him a few times, and it just, we didn't hang, hang, hang on. He didn't want to. I invited him to church, all kinds of stuff. I wasn't a pastor. I'm 19 years old, but man, I know the truth, and I'm free, and I can tell you other things that God set me free of, but we're out of time almost. But the scripture is clear. Homosexuality, homosexuality is sin. But it's not the only sin. And this is where I'm going to break it down really quick. It's not the only sin. If homosexuality's behavior is sin in the eyes of God, but you believe and you, you don't want to, and you want to turn from that, you believe in the Lord, then God's going to set you free. But Paul makes this, listen to this. This is, this is a deep one. I love this. Paul makes it clear in another letter to the Corinthian church. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9 through 11, he says, he says this, 
Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? We're talking about an eternal place. And right now, you get a piece of pass all understand. I'm telling you, you won the lotto. I talk about Ed winning the lotto, going back to Iowa and getting help. But you, if you have Jesus, you win the lotto. No money can buy a kingdom. No money can buy your eternal salvation. You can't be a good person, a philanthropist, who gives money by the millions or billions. It won't get you into heaven, friends. Only believing in Jesus, the way, the truth, and life. You go to the Father that way, and Jesus said, because you express this love to others, I'm going to tell the angels, hey, Gabe, guess what? Lana gave her heart to Jesus, and she talked about him to the homeless. Guess what? Alice, she's telling her grandkids. And, and the angel's going, I know. You know, Billy Graham says he believes that every person has two angels. In fact, uh, in, in Psalms 91, talk, quoted a little bit earlier about we hide under his feathers and that, but also says, and his angels camps about us. Now that's a plural word. You've got a teacher here by the name of Sandra. That's more than one. Some people, I've got a good and a bad one. No, you've got a, you got a couple of angels. And Jesus is going to be bragging about you, Lon, in heaven because you've been talking to Jesus. Alice, too. Lord, I would love to see Jesus say, hey, Bob, guess what? You know, you miss it here, but, but you're still going to make it because you did talk a, about me a couple times. No, he's, he's going to talk about you just as you talk about others. But here's what Corinthians says. Do you not, do not be deceived. See, now this is to Christians. See, Christians say, well, I can't be deceived. That's a lie. You can be deceived. But here's where it says. It says, neither fornicators nor idolat idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminates, by the way, that word effeminate is cross-dresser. So, uh oh now you, because that's a big thing now. We're telling our kids in, 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 in public school, well, if you want to be a, a cat, you want to pee outside but be discreet, or if you want to be a boy or girl, that's an effeminate. Dressing like a, a girl who wants to be a boy or a boy like a girl. It says it right there. Oh, man, you're cutting. They might even cut me off of YouTube for this sermon. I don't know nor homosexuals, nor thieves. Now see, it's just thinking, just, we're just picking on, what? no, we're not picking on nobody, we're picking on sinners. Nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God, end quote. But listen to this, I love this. Verse 11 says this, and such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For some of us were that way. And if you're, if you're still that way, turn to Jesus. Because you won't inherit the kingdom of God. Some people, and, and some people think they're going to heaven. May not make it there. I'm not the judge and jury. I'm just telling you what it says here. But all scripture is clear on the topic of homosexuality on all, and all these other sins too. And one cannot argue that, that, that scripture will support homosexuality. I'm sorry, it just won't. It's, they'll distort it and different things like that. And churches that accept that, well, that's their call. Pastors that accept, that's their call. But I'm not, their, I'm not the pastor, and I'm going to follow God's word. And that's what, that's God's, he wants us to follow him. And yes, that's an area of sin, but heterosexual sin too. We, we, we point the finger, and really there's three of us. Let's be kind and gentle one another. Come on in the church. All of us, because God has a better way. Point three, people don't want to retrain God in their conscience or, or their knowledge, and so they, they, they just leave God out. And so God, he, as we see in 28, God gives them over to their debased mind. And it's, it, it fulfilled their unrighteous and sexual morality, the wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, and all these other things. Untrustworthiness, undeserving, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who know the righteous judgment of God. They know in their heart something's about God, but don't talk to me. Listen to the last part of that. That those who practice such things, practice is a big word. Practice. See, we sin. And all of us sin. Well, I can't sin because i got Jesus. I can't be deceived. Yes, you can. You show me where you can't. I, I, I really, I would challenge you. I, you show me where you can't. I'm, 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 I, I try to read the Bible every day. I haven't seen it there. And every day I read it. I read this Bible, I, I brag again, at least 40 to 45 times. And every year I go through the whole Bible. Not for you, but for me. I want to know God speak to me today. And as, as Greg shared, he says, every time you read it by the Spirit, it's like, whoa, I read that 20 times. I didn't see that one little part. 
I like to throw Greg under the bus. Come to Thursday nights, guys. You're missing some good stuff. And so you in Arizona, come on in on Thursday nights. I'm kidding you. Um, second part of Paul says he gives them over this base mind since there's, there's nothing that God can't, can't see, but they will not abandon this way, this natural result that God has given us. We all have the certain body parts, but we deny with our mindset what we want to do. And that's a sad thing. And so we, it's, it's incapable for them as we go back and that, therefore, to make right decisions because they put God out of their mind. When they put God out of their mind, they cannot think well. And they don't want you to help them think because now you're controlling them. Even in the church, like I said, a pastor can't make you do what you don't want to do. You don't have to ever come back to this church again. But I hope you do because you'll grow in this church or another church. Find a church that you'll grow in. God wants you to grow. And so what happens is Paul suggests we, we, we're, humanity's filled to the brim with evil. And not just that one we, area we're talking about. We have these other areas. And so real quickly, the, these five vices that we talked about, this e, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, these are, th- these are, uh, these are roles, results of greed that lead to the, the following. Sins of the tongue gossip, backbiters, sins of pride, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. And Paul, he, he just talks about this, that, that the result is a sin. It's a domino effect. There's a domino effect. And so the main point that God's given to human beings is, is a deep awareness of these things that, that unrighteousness and, and these other, other areas that God uh, wants us to pull away from. And the last days, let me just share these last illustrations. Uh, well, it's okay to murder babies. Things are different. But well, we're ready. Uh, we really ought to save the whales, you know. We, let's let the criminals out of jail, and because uh, it's too crowded in the jails. Okay, it's like people. I won't even get into that. Uh, the internet is our teacher now. Schools are overrun with social bullies as teachers and left-wing beliefs. Our children's innocence is being challenged to change to think like an adult. Are you kidding? Grade school kids taught that sex ideas of one thing about a male and female's identity. We're seeing this. So it's just not about this one area, but it's, it's, it's that the therefore, we've got away from God. We, dr- drugs in our schools and in society, it's, it's rampant. Right is wrong and wrong is right. White is black and black is white. I, you know, I think I almost lost my appetite with all that stuff. And, you know, Lord, stop the world. I want to get off. But... <laughs> We, he won't let you off. You know why? Because you're the voice. Not the pastor's voice, but he has a voice. But you have a voice too. And God wants to use it wherever you're at. That's God's purposes. And Timothy says this, and I will close in, in just this one thought, a couple thoughts <laughs> said that. Because we started a little late, remember? Okay, so 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4 says this. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Friends, gosh. We haven't even really entered perilous times. Perilous times are on their way. You think, wow, that, this isn't an encouraging congregation or a message. Friends, you need to foresee what's ahead and hide yourself in God like Bam said and get in prayer. But the fool passes on the proverb and say, and they're punished. And Christians too. Oh, it ain't going to happen us. we got Jesus. Baloney. It rains on the just and the unjust. You prepare your heart. Get in the Word. Get in prayer. Bring your kids to church. You come to church, mom and dad. Oh, I know. I got other plans. I got to take care of my kids. I get it. I do too. I still got grandkids, but I got to talk to them too. It's up to you. It's not up to the pastor, but pastors are going to encourage you because perilous times are coming. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And the list can go on and on. People don't want to retain God in their knowledge. You know, there's, there's a solution. God is calling His people back. He's calling them back to the church as well. Coming back to the altar and praying. Now, we don't do a lot of that because we don't have time. And I've seen churches where people come forward. But I'm asking you, come forward with your heart. Rent your heart. Come to Him. Come back to the cross and we see, we go back to Old Testament, Chronicles 
7.14 says, If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. That's the truth. And so, friends, let's humble our hearts. I'm not going to ask you to come up. I mean, I wish, I, wish, wish we would like that kind of stuff. I don't like that stuff. I want to get back down for some coffee. I don't like that stuff. Friends, would you stand with me, please? I'm asking you to bow your hearts before the Lord because we're living in a time that's so perilous. You've seen nothing yet, and I'm sorry. I wish it was different. I wish heaven was on earth, but the millennial hasn't happened. And before the millennial, when Jesus comes back, when we screw up so much, humanity does this. Not God. When presence of God, His light leaves, darkness comes in. And this country, this world, is allowing darkness to come in. And unless he comes in, the Bible tells us that all of humanity would be destroyed. Friends, would you call out to the Lord, and would you just wrench your heart before him because he cares about you so much because he wants to use us in these times. And Father, I pray for myself. Lord, help me to stay more focused. Not focus on TV, the internet. Lord, what me, myself, or my wife, or Lord, we know that there's time and place for everything, but Lord, you're calling us. Lord, I pray, Lord, as I give my heart to you again this morning, Lord, I confess, Lord, that I need you more. Lord, forgive me. Forgive our sins. Forgive my sins of, Lord, just selfishness or any judgmentalness of any brother or sister around me. We're my family. We all have that. Lord, let my eyes be more open to you. And Lord, if there's those that are viewing or even in this room who have never called out to you, Jesus, calling out to you with all their heart, Lord, I need you. Come into my life. I need you, Lord. I want to do 180. Lord, set me free of, of whatever is holding on to me, Lord. Forgive me. Lord, come into my life. And then, Lord, help us to learn about you by reading the Word and getting in a good fellowship. Lord, thank you. Lord, bless your people. As you told us, if my people were called by my name of Jesus, if they humble themselves and pray, you will forgive their sins and heal their, their families, where their jobs are, in the country, in the city, in the state where they live. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray and everyone will say amen. amen. God bless you. See you next week. Thank you for joining us.